Let's now look at what was in the 1920s the holy grail of chemical applications of quantum mechanics, the hydrogen atom. So in our model system for the hydrogen atom, what we are going to have is a proton, which is going to be fixed at the origin. And we know that the proton has a charge of, let's say, Q of P equals plus the magnitude of the electron charge, which is plus 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. <coughs> and the mass of a proton is going to be the atomic mass unit, 1.61, 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27th kilograms, or thereabouts. And we're going to have some electron, which is free to move anywhere in space. So the electron has full, roam, full range to do anything at once in all of three-dimensional space. We know that the charge of the electron is minus E, minus the magnitude of that charge, which is minus 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. And we know its mass is something like 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Okay, so why are we justified then in saying that the proton is fixed at the origin? Well, we know that if we take the ratio of these two values, the mass of the proton divided by the mass of the electron, that's something like 1,823. So if we imagine this as some, or an electron which is rotating around it, uh, the center of mass is very, very, very close to the proton. So it's effectively that the proton isn't moving very much, and we can make our lives a lot simpler by saying that it isn't moving at all. We know that more formally, we would have to use the reduced mass, which is the product of those masses divided by their sum, which if you actually work that out, comes to be about 0.999 five times the mass of the electron. So it's a 0.05% error to say that you have an electron moving at some radius r around a fixed proton relative, relative to saying that it's an electron and proton rotating around their common center of mass. But um, we know that formally we should use the reduced mass, but for our, our sake we're just going to use uh, mass of the electron and you can put in reduced mass in, in your mind if you want to do that. That's that's what we'll do eventually. So in order to solve this model system quantum mechanically, we need to define what our Hamiltonian is. So first, our kinetic energy. Well, our proton's not moving, and our electron is moving, so all the kinetic energy is going to be in the electron. And that's going to be minus h bar squared over 2m, and the mass is mass of the electron, me times del squared, the Laplacian operator, which is the second derivative with respect to position in all the Cartesian dimensions, or the more complicated version in spherical polar. We're going to have a potential energy, which is just going to be the Coulomb force acting between the two for our potential. And it's convenient to write this in terms of the distance between these two which we know the Coulomb force in general would be Q1 times Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught times the distance between the two particles, which in our case is Q1 is plus E, Q2 is minus E, so together that's minus E squared, so we have minus E squared over 4 pi epsilon naught, and we're calling our distance variable R. Okay, and that's so that's our V of R. Our V of R equals that, dot, dot, dot. Our V of angular coordinates, if we, change the, if we keep the same R but change the angle, there is no change in potential energy. So just like with the rigid rotor, our potential energy in theta and phi, the polar angle and azimuthal angle in spherical polar coordinates, is zero. So it's convenient, again, to use spherical polar coordinates because it's natural 
uh, most natural to express the potential energy in that coordinate system in terms of r, theta, and phi. So in order to do that, we need our Laplacian in spherical polar coordinates. And that becomes quite a large Gaudi operator, which we'll write down right now. So del squared equals 1 over r squared, partial with respect to r, of the quantity r squared, partial with respect to r. Again, note the order of operations here. Plus 1 over r squared, sine theta, partial with respect to theta, sine theta, partial with respect to theta. Again, be careful about order of operations. Take that first differential, then multiply times sine, then take the second differential. And finally, plus 1 over r squared sine squared theta times second derivative with respect to phi. OK, and that's our total Laplacian operator. So that makes our total Hamiltonian operator h, which is t plus v, equals minus h bar squared over 2me del squared minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r. So this is our Hamiltonian, uh, and this is our Laplacian for the hydrogen atom model. And we need to solve the equation h psi. Psi is going to be a function of r, theta, and phi, the spherical polar coordinates, equals the energies of the wave functions times r, theta, and phi. So we're going to see what the solution is, what energy levels we get, and what type of wave functions we get as a function of these three variables here.